The general election you attend, you vote in, is less important than the primary you skip. 25% Republican participation in primaries nationally is an embarrassment and a disgrace, and until that number changes, we will not save the United States of America. So Jesse, what do I do? Well, here's one you can get involved in. Bacon out of Nebraska. He is a Republican congressman, one of the biggest turds in Congress, routinely screws over you and your values, and there's a solid human being running against him. You want to hear from this guy? Dan Fry joins us now, running against the famous, infamous Don Bacon. You know his name if you watch this show. All right, Dan, why are you running against that piece of trash? Well, Jesse, I don't know what else I can add to that. You, uh, you summed it up pretty well right there. Um, and I could not agree more that the primary that you skip is far more important than the general election that you'll ever vote in. The primary is where we start to take out this garbage. It, it's where we start to get things to where we've actually got some alternatives that are gonna make a difference uh, in DC. And if we don't fix it at the primary, then you might as well just accept the fact that you're gonna get two, two more years or six more years of the same junk that uh, we've been getting for, for decades now. Dan, why do people like Don get elected in places like Nebraska? And I'm not pointing any fingers at Nebraska. My state of Texas is famous for this, South Carolina, the Dakotas. These red states, these meat and potato states, America type states, they pick the biggest right. losers to send to Congress in the Senate. And I don't understand it. How did this guy weasel his way through the Nebraska primary and into the Congress? Well, what you have to understand is that when Congressman Bacon first got to Nebraska. He ran as an individual that was going to go and he was going to cut spending. He was going to cut the debt, the deficit. He was going to get the border under control. All of, all of those things were a part of his platform. Um, he's delivered on none of it. But the problem that we've got is that once they're elected, they become entrenched. They have the money necessary to control the narrative. So it's hard to get rid of them once you realized what you've put into office. So again, when, when that happens, it becomes even more imperative that you've got to get involved in this, uh, in this primary election. You've got to listen to what's actually taking place. But they end up with a war chest going into a primary once they're elected, and that's hard to overcome. That's hard to beat. Why are you running? What got you all fired up and into this thing? Well, here's, here's the reality of, of what's gotten us to where we're at today. I did this 10 years ago, back when the Tea Party was, was alive and well. And we had a very similar congressman at the time. And uh, his name was Lee Terry. And Lee Terry had been there for eight terms, 16 years. And the people of Nebraska were just tired. They were tired of Lee taking his marching orders from what was, at that point in time, John Boehner. And Lee, Lee stopped listening to his constituents. We were still feeling the after effects of bailing out the auto industry. We were still feeling the after effects of, of bailing out the banks. Uh, the government had just taken over the healthcare industry and it was uncertain, it was unclear as to what kind of healthcare were we gonna have? Were we gonna repeal this? Were we gonna replace Obamacare? What was happening with it? And Jesse, at the time, we had tens of thousands of people a year crossing our border and nobody was doing anything about it. They were crossing the border illegally and we were $17 trillion in debt. I had two grandchildren and one on the way at the time. And at that point in time, I looked at this and said, this isn't sustainable. We can't continue down this path. So I ran for office. And what was interesting is, is we had a very similar situation to what we've got right now. We were outspent 20 to one. We fell 2.9% short of flipping the vote because once we got to the constituents, once we got to the voters, they were, they were upset. They, 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 were, they were ready for a change. And um, we, again, th that race right there, there was only one other race in that election cycle that was any closer. You may remember it. It was when uh, Dave Bratt beat Eric Cantor, the, uh, the sitting uh, speaker for the Republicans. It was a great night. We, and again, being outspent 20 to one, we fell 2.9% short. So it can be done. You've got to get out there and you've got, you've got to get going. So, so when you ask what made me get involved in this race, if you look at what motivated me 10 years ago and where we're at today, every one of those metrics are, are far worse today than, than they were 10 years ago. And at that time I had two grandchildren and one on the way, I've now got 10. 
So I think it's worthy of sounding the alarm that says, folks, we're headed for a fiscal cliff like we've never seen before. It, if we don't fix it soon, it's not going to be recoverable. We've got a full-blown border invasion on our southern border, and no one's doing anything about it. And I'm tired of listening to the Republican Party say you need a new president. We need we need to get a new president. No, you don't. Take the constitutional authority and powers that you've got in the in the power of the purse and fix this mess. If you've got a if you've got a uh, president that doesn't want to cooperate with you, you have control of the purse. You control what happens. It was it was Justice uh, Scalia that it said the House is the most powerful branch of the government because they control the purse strings. So if you don't like what's happening, stop funding it. But we don't have anybody in the House, at least not from Nebraska, that's got the courage to lead. So it's time that we send individuals to D.C. that will actually do something rather than to talk about it. Dan, so what's your website so people can go support you? What's your website? Or, uh, it's Fry. The number four, Nebraska.com. It's F R E I, the number four, Nebraska.com. Here's where we're at. We love where we're at right now. We've got a ground game that is second to none. I've never seen so many volunteers in a campaign. We're touching tens of thousands of doors in this campaign. We're going to be outspent, but we're not going to be outworked. We like where we're at. We believe that Don Bacon has served his last term in office. So, you know, we're, 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 feeling pretty good about where we're at.